Hi everyone. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to get deep into code straight away. So I'm going to be building, as Titus just pointed out, a to-do app. We're going to be using TypeScript and Express. And the libraries that we have work best in that environment, but the patterns will be similar in other languages. You should be able to follow along. All right, let's go into this code. I want, I've started with a, an API already, right? A very simple, probably the simplest possible Express app which lists, lets you list and retrieve to-dos. So this is a, basically a REST API right now running on port 3000. So you can interact with it using something like curl, right? So I can do curl localhost to do and get me all my to-dos. I can probably, that's nice. The autocomplete has made this a bit easier for me, add one, and then I can remove one as well, which would be something like to do zero x delete. I think it'll be something like that. Go back to my list. We've got no to-dos. The MCP version will be focusing very heavily on that. What do I mean by MCP version? I want to now expose this service layer via an MCP interface, as Titus just described, which allows it to be consumed by an LLM. And at the end of the presentation, then I'll show, I'll show a demo using Claude Desktop. So in order to do that, we need to start by adding a few libraries. So I'm going to add Zod, as we mentioned, the model context protocol SDK from Anthropic, and then Civic's auth MCP library that, uh, that handles the auth. And I've already got them pre-installed here. Good. And now we can get started with creating an MCP version of this app. So I'm going to create a new file here to a new module to keep everything neat. That's the import you want from the MCP library. And it takes a couple of parameters. It takes a name, which I'm just going to call it to do app and then a version, which is not relevant for us. Okay. That's the MCP server. Now a server, it's a little bit of a confusing name. Really it's just a mapping between tools and other resources that you want to expose to an LLM to transport, which is basically how the LLM will communicate with it. So we're going to take each of those in turn now. I'm going to start by adding the tools. So that'll be MCP server dot tool. And it takes a number of parameters depending on which over override you want to use. I'm going to create one tool basically for every one of these endpoints here in the REST API. So I'll try and do it nice and quick, list to do's, and then the description, which will be just list all the to do's for the user. And then we come to the actual definition of the callback itself. So this is, we have no input parameters and then the extra we're not going to use just yet, but we will use that later. It's asynchronous and it's going to just call that service layer. So we're basically going to take the service layer from here and plunk it down here and we just need to get a user ID. Now I'm going to do all at the end. So for now, I'm just going to create another pl placeholder here. User ID is just going to be one for now. And at the end, we'll replace that with civic auth. And then we need to return a response. And that's a very specific response type that I will try now to, to, to remember off the top of my head. It's content. The actual content can be multimodal, can be things like strings and, or it can also be the videos and, and audio and so on, but we've just got type text and we've got the text will be, let's say the to do's, but listed, but joined with a separator like that. Okay. So now we've handled the tools. The next thing on the list for, for the MCP server is the transport. Now MCP is what's called transport agnostic which means that it doesn't really, the protocol doesn't really care how you talk to it. And this MCP server instance from the SDK also doesn't really care. That's the job of the transport. So we're going to do that next. Typically, and in this example, the transport is going to be an HTTP transport. Specifically, it's called streamable HTTP server transport. I think I also have to go back up and fix that import. We're moving away from the world we've had in the first half of this year where all the mcp servers are local what's called stdio command line transports to a world where they're now deployed remotely and 
usable in a kind of a multi-tenant environment. And that's something I wanted to mention at the start. So this is the difference between an MCP server that you run on your own machine, handling your to-do list to multi-tenant MCP server that handles this for any, for any users and for multiple users. And this is the, a more common pattern that we're seeing. So if you're de deploying an API, you also will be deploying an MCP server if you're not already. And that's what we're building here, just to make that clear. So I think there's only one parameter that's needed in this transport by default, and that's called the session ID generator. But we're going to set this to undefined. And then this is time to now add this transport to an HTTP server, in other words, to our express layer, in order to expose it to the world. So this is where we come back into the app. And we are going to do that by creating a new endpoint, the post endpoint. And by convention, it uses the MCP path, but it doesn't have to. And what we're going to effectively do is we're going to pass the request into the transport. So once we get the transport, which I'll import in a minute, we do handle request and pass in the request. It will also populate the response. And then there's one other thing you need to add here. If you are already parsing your request bot, your press body. So in my example here, I'm using the JSON middleware because I'm making use of it here in, in the, in the rest interface. So if I'm already parsing the JSON middleware and I don't tell the transport that, sorry, if I'm already parsing the request and I don't tell the transport that, then it will try to parse it again. It'll try to read from the input stream and it will fail because you can only read from the input stream once. So luckily there's a very convenient way to add that to the transport. We'll just pass rec body here. If you don't have that, if you if you don't have any kind of body parsing middleware or anything like that, then you won't need that. But okay, so that actually does all the work, but we need to now get the transport. And this is where if we were using sessions, you would be looking up the transport for your current session. So you'd be looking up based on the session ID in the header. But because we're not using sessions, we're creating a new transport and a new server every request, which means we need to get those now. We need to create those now. And that essentially means passing this entire thing into a function and calling it on every request. Now that sounds, I'm going to say async function. That's not main, it's get server. And I'll just leave the input. That. It sounds heavy because you're creating a new server every time. But don't worry, it's not. It's just, it, this is, like I said, essentially a mapping. So you're not really creating any new, it's perfectly, even though it's, there's, there is an async section here that I haven't done there, which is com combining or linking the server to the transport, which you do by doing await mcp server dot connect transport. Unless you're using a particularly exotic type of transport, which we're not, this is all very fast. So there's no overhead in, in doing this on every request or no significant overhead. And for me, that would mean that that's why I would, I would recommend it for the simplicity. The more you can simplify the session management, the, the less, the less, the fewer things can go wrong from a security perspective. And like I said, we have seen some pretty nasty breaches caused by people misusing sessions here. So I'm going to return the transport and this server as a tuple here. And then I will in, I will load them in here using const transport and cp server equals await get server. And then I have to make this asynchronous this entire thing. Great. So that's pretty much it. There's one thing that you need to do. You can see I am not using the MCP server here because we are creating resources on every request. In order to prevent a memory leak, albeit a relatively small one, we should also close these resources again. So we can do that by using a, an event handler on the, on the response. So on close, we're just going to clean up after ourselves close. So when the response is finished and the stream is closed, we're just going to call transport.close await, and we're going to call await MCP server.close as well. Right. Now at this point, you have a working MCP server as Titus already teed up. It's essentially a one-liner from Civic Auth. What we're going to do is I've already imported Civic Auth, so I can just in, use it here. Await Auth 
that and import it. And then that's the, the line that adds auth to your, to your MCP server. I'll go through it in a moment. One thing you will need to do is add a client. So what does that do? It protects your MCP endpoint and only your MCP endpoint with auth, which means now you have to send a, a bearer token alongside your request to hit that endpoint. Where do you get that bearer token? That's the second thing that it does. It exposes at this endpoint, the OAuth protected resource, it exposes some metadata about your resource and says by default that you want to get an OAuth token from auth.civic.com. And that's the resource that, that's the metadata that the LLM agent consumes and knows how to, how to process. So now we've pretty much done it. The only thing we need to do now is remove this placeholder from the, from the tools. So this is where this extra field comes in. So civic, the civic auth MCP library now extracts the, verifies the bearer token that comes in, extracts the user ID and places it into extra. So you just replace this with extra dot auth info dot. There's a bit of a, bit of a thing you have to go through here. The API on the, from the MCP library is not the best at this best here, but it's basically that these can all be undefined and then you have to tell TypeScript that it has to be a string. So I'm just going to very quickly just force it to be a string in real life, in a production environment, you would want to do some null verification here or undefined verification here to make sure you're not casting, but the civic library essentially enforces that sub exists and that it's not a, it, that it's not undefined. It would have failed out before that, but the, but this library doesn't, the MCP library doesn't let you parameterize this extra field at this point, it probably will in the future. So this is just something you need to remember essentially. And what is this sub? This is the, your unique user ID for the user associated with the client that you have in here. So this will be something that then you can map to whatever user ID you're already using in your database. I'm just going to use it in this example as my database user ID. And if you're building a, an, an app from scratch, that's what I would recommend, but if you already have a set of user IDs in the database, then this base is something that you would map to it. And now that's it. So I'm just going to quickly put that in all of the other tools as well. And we're done. I've actually one important, I'm going to jump to Claude desktop for a second and I need to probably, yeah, let me just make sure that everything's up and running list to do, please list my to do's. One important point with Civic, with the cloud, with Claude desktop is that you can only yes, yeah, restarting in the background, of the server. Okay. I have an empty to-do list. So let me actually go through the demo here, and then I'll talk about a couple of caveats you need to know when you're testing this with Claude desktop. So you can see, I can ask it to list my to-dos. I can also say something like, okay, please add exercise. And then please list them again.